So Meg, what was going on in the 70s and the 80s in LA? Oh my God, in Los Angeles, what was going on? I mean, it was a really um, burgeoning community of artists. You know, I think what you're seeing with Ulysses Jenkins is he's part of a very diverse artist community. So oftentimes when we think about Ulysses Jenkins and let's say black video art, which is maybe what drew me initially to doing the exhibition, um, Ulysses was collaborating and working with lots of people in Los Angeles. So anyone from David Hammonds, uh, Sangin Agudi, uh, Marin Hassinger, but he also was working with people like um, Mae Sun, uh, Daniel Martinez, um, Kerry James Marshall in the 19 kind of oh, movie. Really? Yeah. What was he doing with Kerry James Marshall? So him and Kerry James Marshall went to school together at Otis. Uh, Ulysses was a graduate student in the kind of late 1970s. So this is about 1978, 1979. And Ulysses meets Kerry James Marshall as one of four, including Ulysses, with uh, Ronnie Nichols and Greg Pitts of black students. And so they go together and they end up performing a work that's currently in this show called Two Zone Transfer. And so within the exhibition, you'll have a chance to see an original poster uh, that Carrie James Marshall designed as well as um, a full book that he created. And then when talking to Carrie James Marshall, I guess his mother also loaned um, uh, furniture for the set of the performance. <laughs> and so, you know, really thinking this is an art community at the edge of America. You know, Los Angeles is now an art epicenter, but at the time it wasn't quite that. And so Ulysses was studying with pioneering artists such as um, Chris Burton, Betty Saar, Charles White, uh, the media theorist Gene Youngblood. Um, he shows his work very early on to Namjoon Pike while Namjoon Pike is visiting UCLA. And what, and what was the reaction of Namjoon Pike? Namjoon Pike was, you know, very encouraging to Ulysses. He said, I really think you're onto something, um, but why not you try? And this was the work that he had shown to Zone Transfer that he made with Kerry James Marshall. He said, why don't you try grabbing someone's attention very quickly? So thinking about the way we talk about video now, you have to grab someone's attention. And Ulysses goes on to make a video called inconsequential dog roll. And what about, what, how did he collaborate with David Ammons? Because we see David Ammons several times in the, in the videos here. Oh, with dance? Uh, did you say dance within the performance? Um, Ulysses is very interested in dance, mostly through his relationship with Marin Hassinger, Sangin Agudi, and also the choreographer Rudy Perez. Um, Ulysses ends up winning a grant. And at one point, he opens up his own studio, Other Visions. And within Other Visions, he starts having dance workshops with Rudy Perez. Um, there's archival footage that I could, I could send to you that has Sangin Agudi, Marin Hassinger, May Sun, and then a, an, a local artist named Chrono all performing their choreography together. At one point, Ulysses is invited to um, film dance at Just Above Midtown, the influential gallery. And he films Houston Conwell's performance, Cakewalk. It's one of the most beautiful pieces that really appears within the show. But uh, yeah, I was asking about, uh, sorry, I pronounced badly, oh, David Ammons. Oh, David Ammons, of course. <laughs> my French accent. Oh, no worries at all. I think because of the format, I'm like trying to answer in <laughs> concession to you. Please. So the story goes that I've heard from Ulysses is that one day he came home and David Hammonds was sitting on his couch. Um, David had heard of Ulysses um, and he said he wanted to come and check out and see who this guy was. Um, they begin to form a friendship and as David is leaving Los Angeles for New York, Ulysses films a piece called King David. Um, it feels as if it's a documentary, but it's actually David Hammonds performing David Hammonds. And Ulysses, um, you know, films him making his body prints, they're in conversation, and they've been in conversation ever since. Um, there's a later work in 2006, I believe is the year, um, called In the Midnight Hour. Um, they continue to be in dialogue with each other, and throughout all of Ulysses' early work, quite a few major works, of, um, have David Hammonds performing, uh, particularly Dream City is one of the ones that come to mind. And uh, what, how, do, uh, how do you think Charles White was influential on Ulysses? Charles White was an incredibly uh, influential figure, not just within Los Angeles, but within you know, all of America. We're also understanding that Charles White had a huge impact globally. 
Um, Ulysses studied with him and Charles White had a notion of images of dignity. It was ways of counteracting uh, stereotypical images that appeared within media um, and stereotypes of the black community. You see Ulysses pick that up within his work um, very, very early on. First, it's a critique of mass media and then he wants to create his own images that project a diverse black life, that it's not a monolith, that it's also um, far more complex than a lot of media outlets would play out. And so within the room that has a Charles White documentary, Ulysses also has um, remnants of the Watts Festival, and it's a counter narrative to how people had perceived the Watts uprising. And uh, what do you think that uh, Ulysses has invented? What he invented, I mean, I think what you're seeing within this show is an early experimental video artist. This is a person that's very interested in found media. I think when you look at someone like Arthur Jaffa's work, you're seeing an absolute predecessor, um, particularly his work in Consequential Dog Roll. He's pulling a lot of things from television at the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you can keep on, I will cut. You're pulling from television at the time. You're also seeing things that he's doing that I think is really influential to artists like Khalil Joseph um, in his Black News Project. Ulysses is literally producing community news in the mid-1970s in Los Angeles. Also, Arthur Jaffa and um, Khalil both work in Los Angeles. I think you also see within Ulysses' practice a real interest in the music video as an artistic format. Um, it took me a long time to sort of see that within his practice, but as he's making these works, it really is at the dawn of MTV and what we'd come to know as the music video, which becomes incredibly influential in the 1990s. Um, and but even Andy Warhol worked with MTV. Absolutely, but yet Ulysses didn't have access to be able to work with MTV. And so he's making his own music videos for his friends, his band, you know, he's making all of that that's very much locally uh, circulated. I think the thing about Ulysses' work to sort of remember is that it's not getting a larger national play. This is the very first exhibition that is actually even uh, cataloging and showing his work together. And so lots of people on the East Coast just didn't know the work that he was making. When was, when was Ulysses really discovered? It's something new, no? You know, when was Ulysses discovered? I think, you know, his friends knew of his work, but the way that I found out about Ulysses' work was in 2013, and it was for the exhibition Now Dig This that was curated by, you know, the influential, I mean, someone I absolutely love, Kelly Jones. And Kelly Jones's exhibition really brought to the forefront a lot of practices we now know today. Um, I knew David Hammonds at the time, but I did not know Sangha Naguti. I did not know- But David Hammonds went to New York, in fact. He did go to New York, but originally he was working in Los Angeles. And so her exhibition looks at from the 60s to the 1980s. So you're seeing the time right when David Hammonds is leaving uh. that art community. And there is one video artist in that show, and that is Ulysses Jenkins. And that's and so how you discover it. That is how I discovered Ulysses' work. That is the first time I saw Ulysses' work. And so as much as this is a discovery for many people, this is the first time that they're seeing Ulysses' work, I also don't want to um, downplay the impact that other curators like Kelly Jones has had in showing Ulysses' work very early on. Mm -hmm. So from that time you decided you needed to show and you dig in his, you, in, in his archive, right? Uh, yeah, I think the first thing I did was I decided I wanted to become a curator and I started <laughs> curating some shows. And then about six years ago, I called up Aaron Cristobal, who's at the Hammer Museum, a friend of mine. Both of us are born and raised in Los Angeles. We're interested in video. And we work with contemporary video makers like Arya Dean, Martine Sims, Sandra Perry. And I just said, I think we should do something that really looks back at who you know the grandfather was of a lot of these practices. How did we get to the moment that we are in? And when you see the show and you see Ulysses' works, 
it, it's undoubtable just like how influential he's been, the images that he's created and the ways that he was working. And so Aaron and I decided to um, come together and we dug very deep. There's lots of things within the show that Ulysses hasn't seen in 30 years that, you know, things that have been digitized for the first time. And we're also providing archival documentation. So you have a, a real sense of how he's working through um, scores and sketches and treatments as well, which speak to a lot of kind of 60s, 70s conceptual art practices. But he's very free, that's amazing, right? He is very free. I he has a sense of freedom, which is it gigantic. Comes up a lot. I think a lot of people have brought up, especially in seeing the show here, how freeing the show feels. And I think some of it is the fact that, you know, there wasn't an art market for this at the time. These are people, these are literally best friends, people who have been friends for, you know, 50 plus years coming together to make their work together. And you feel that sense of love. You do not feel as if Ulysses is trying to make the perfect video. There isn't multiple takes. He's not trying to have the greatest quality. He's there to document. He's there to perform. He's there to capture. And I think there's something, you know, for me that is very freeing in looking at his work. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you.